Check me out, Jean-Michel Jarre everybody. I'm here on the stage for Friday night. Uh, welcome to Big Brother's Little Brother. I hope you're all very well. It's day 61, only three, count them, three, count them, three days left. Yes, indeedy, folks. Now the end is near and so we face the final curtain. For what is a man? What has he got? More of that later on. But yesterday, the housemates tackled the third part of that getting to know you, getting to know all about you task, uh, the vocational challenge. Big Brother asked the housemates to teach uh, one another their jobs or skills. Uh, Liz had to learn how to be an air hostess. Brian, a flamenco dancer. Dean, uh, a hairdresser. And Helen had to learn uh, how to play guitar. This is what happened. Oh, I look <laughs> like an old transvestite! <laughs> they don't understand what they've done to me in here. It's just a bit of fun. You haven't got friends like I've got. Sit down! Look at okay. her body. Just hold it down. Throw them on the floor, darling. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on board this Boeing 747 flight to Bow. In case of an emergency, follow the floor lighting to these emergency exits. In the unlikely event of a landing in the sea, you'll find this life jacket underneath your seats. Thank you very much for your attention. Hey! Did I do anything like well that? done, dude. <laughs> he always keeps you waiting. Does he? It's because I'm so good. I'm in demand. He's seen that guy David now, hasn't he? Easy. Indeed, because they passed and extraordinary for efforts the minimum wage of three, which they spent on Chardonnay beer and a probably poisoned oyster, allegedly. <laughs> okay, uh, but even that couldn't help Dean forget his humiliation at wearing Helen's uniform. Uh, we're now delighted to be joined for the first time by one of Dean's friends or family, uh, his friend Dave, Dean's mate. Hello, Dave. Hi, Dermot. How are you? All right. Not bad, thank you. Excellent stuff. Can I just say, uh, contrary to what Vanessa has been saying, we're massive fans of Dean down here. <laughs> All right, so I need you to pass that. I think so, I know. <laughs> Good, well, that's nice to have got off to a flying start. I have to apologise about that. <laughs> OK, okay uh, now, do you think he suited pink? Uh, to be honest, um, I thought he looked quite fetching. I know it's not uh, probably a normal Dean look, but uh, I thought it looked all right. Probably wouldn't wear it to a Birmingham City home match, though. Mm. And even though I imagine he could probably go naked to a Birmingham City home match. And, or he uh, could be, have worn uh, blue satin pants, maybe that would have gone down there. Now, uh, do you ever think he's ever going to be able to live this down with his friends? Absolutely not. I think he's going to, uh, it's going to haunt him to his grave. I'm well, you... pretty sure his friends and family are never going to let him forget it. Dave, do you think this, yeah, this will be your personal mission now to make him to remind <laughs> him of this for the rest of his life? In drag website. I can actually see him doing a couple of uh, PAs in certain clubs with it. Uh... <laughs> okay, uh, now is he going to win? That's the question we want to know. Uh, I think he can. I really do. I think uh, some of the voting's been really unpredictable. So um, I don't think it's over until Friday night. Excellent. L lovely to speak to you, Dave. Thank you very much. Okay. Take... okay as the booze loosen. It's got all confessional and finally admitted who's nominated who. Take a look. I've week nominated one. you once. <gasps> <laughs> week one. <laughs> week two. Week five! <gasps> <laughs> it's only been once, though. Why week five? I just said, Brian's a vindictive spot git. And he knows it. <laughs> 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 so look at my friends! Hate her! Who left to week two? Stuart. Stuart. I mean, Stuart got nominated. I wasn't surprised. But, no, no, no. I didn't know Mitch Stewart. I, I was did. surprised. I did. I was really surprised. I was really surprised. He was too competitive. My exact same reason, too competitive. He was too competitive group. and aggressive for this situation. Mm. You know my worst two. one? Wow. I nominated Narinda. Sure, I nominated Narinda about I'm sure you five nominated weeks in the Narinda. track. I didn't. Uh -huh. I nominated her because I could just feel this group thing of like, she's really me off. Can I just say, how random is that guy who was just standing there with an umbrella? He hasn't been there. Eight weeks have been here. That's the first we've seen of him. Look at that. Random. OK, now, the honestly continue with the fireworks outside. Force the housemates indoors. Helen determined to talk about Clarkie at every opportunity. Got a lot more than she bargained for. Take a look. One night, Helen, he said 60% from him and 60% from you and 40% from him. Ha-ha. 
Six grand for me? Yes, in the relationship. When was that? In here. Recently. The, the, the chat on the patio really? door? Really? You so see? That, you know, and you would have more to worry about. I got more to worry Hello? about, yeah. But Hello? I think it was 50 50. Well, then he said that two nights Hello? later, she obviously changed his mind. Demons, everything you want. Them. Age, don't worry, he changed his mind. Oh, why did I. I but no, I, no, I no, the thing always worried about. I like that, Dave, coming out of the bush like the old Khmer Rouge or something. <laughs> um, glad to be joined by, I guess, they tell Paul Thompson. Hello. Hello. And Paul. Paul, what did you make of that? Hi. What did I make of that? But yeah, Elizabeth. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Um, it, it just shows people's character, doesn't it? It really, really does. I mean, in the house was so, so different to the response that she's got out here. Um, Are you surprised she said what she said there? About the relationship being 60-40 and... Cause, I mean, it's not necessarily that, surprised. Why did she say it? I don't understand why. Helen. Yeah, I don't know why she said it. Um, for someone to say something like that, realising that obviously Helen sort of have, has missed me, she's got to be a bit evil, really, to say it. It's, it's a horrible thing to say. And, she was drunk, though. Yeah, but there was still a bit of spite in there, I think. Um, you can see just in her face. Um, I just can't wait to correct Helen, really, because that's well, well out of order, will isn't we, it? Will you be having words when, when she comes out with uh, Elizabeth? Well, uh, yeah, I only, well, I only need to say one line, and that's it. OK, you probably can't say that on TV. No, no, right? no, 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 <laughs> just why did you do it? OK, cool. Did you see that? I mean, the whole... Um... Yeah, well, I've heard about it. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, I think that maybe there's a little bit of backstabbing going on, as you said. Mm. Um, okay, you okay. have to have words with her. OK, now, yeah, by 11.30 uh, yeah. Friday, each of the four remaining housemates will have walked along here uh, to face the public and, indeed, their fate. Seven others have already made the journey and discovered that Big Brother had a final surprise in store, a personal theme tune for their eviction. You might remember that uh, Josh's uh, was I'm Too Sexy Stewart's The Eye of the Tiger, hilariously. And uh, last Friday, Lusty Lothario, Paul Clark was greeted by the strange of horny, horny, horny. <laughs> did, you, did you notice that at all while you left? I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice it. I didn't hear anything. I just heard people. I couldn't hear anything at all apart from people, right, well, and I remember just like shaking people's hands, but that was it. Okay. It was my whole head was completely gone. Well, just to make up for that, we've got an alternative theme tune for you now. Uh, Praise silence, everyone. Let's hear it. Here comes the mirror man. <laughs> he says he's a nice, eh? What do you think? <laughs> very nice, mate. Very you can nice. Actually, very nice. Probably a take on some some record company. You probably actually re re maybe, that with maybe. You. It's embarrassing, but very nice. What would you pick for yourself? What would I pick? Yeah. For myself. Got me on the spot there. What song will I, song, song I pick for myself? <laughs> yeah. I've got no idea, but okay. whatever song I'm going to pick, I'm going to do a big story about it so you don't want to hear anything. What about you? <laughs> I think I've got to get out of this house by the animal. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think would be most suitable for the current bunch? For the current bunch? Yeah, just pick one, one of the guys. Um, oh, well, for, for Helen, it's got to be something like um, It's Raining Men, she always used to do that, or uh, Barbie Doll or something. But you Barbie have Girl your or something. Vein. By Carly Simon. <laughs> no, for, for me? <laughs> we'll get back how, to this. How, okay. how rude. But I quite fancy you going myself. <laughs> how rude. I wonder what theme tune they give me. And your private dance, you <laughs> dance all my money. Do what you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be, that'll be good. Just and right. OK, now uh, we already know uh, the theme tunes for the first seven housemates. Well, what's the Big Brother, what's good Big Brother going to choose for the remaining four? Our talking point for today, therefore, is choose a tune for the housemates. Ring up and quite simply give us a song. 0870 901 9070, 0870 901 9070. Now, one person who will probably end up writing his own eviction tune is uh, Dino Lachlan. Every day we're taking a look at the best moments of our final four. Today is D-Day, that's Dean Day. He'll be your private dancer. Take a look at this. <laughs> Sometimes in our lives, we all have friends, someone to care. Dean is now the sugar lump king. It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody hey, to lean Think of the music. Lean on. You know, you might. Yeah, I'm getting mostly scarred by losing a sausage, darling. You've got to see something. We all need somebody to lean on. Go away, eh, Josh? My name's Melinda. When you need a hand, we all need somebody to lean on. You know you might not have a problem that you'll understand.
Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's all good. <sighs> oh, just Very impressive. Back. Okay. What do you think of Dean? Oh, get my breath back. <laughs> Big fan. Um, Dean, no, I, he's a bit boring. Okay. Why? Well, he's the guitar. I don't know. I don't really like his music. Okay. Uh, who do you think will have the least votes on Thursday? With that in mind, then. And I why? think he probably will actually because of that. I don't think. I don't think he's got much sort of stage oh. presence, as it were, charisma. Uh, so, with, with, with that in mind as well, who do you think the last? Uh, what order will the last three? Go? I think he'll go first, and I think um, Elizabeth will. She's quite responsible, and I'm not so keen on her. And um, then the guy, Paul. Brian. Uh, Brian, sorry. Who's over and, there? He, yeah, he's I escaped know. already. Yeah, no, 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 I know. Thanks. And lastly, right. so you think Helen? I think Helen's going to be the winner, yeah. And what's been your favourite sort of moment so far in the, in the whole series? I quite liked it when Josh walked in. I think that no one knew who he was. Do you fancy a... Josh? Yeah, I did fancy Josh, actually. I mean, did. I know. Did. Yeah, See, yeah, that's did. it, isn't it? Because when, when he cut his hair off, all, the, all my girlfriends yeah, loved him, and then the minute he cut his hair off, forget it. Yeah, I kind of, he sort of had a good vibe about him, but then maybe, maybe the vibe rubbed off a bit. OK, now, if you could organise a best eviction party, okay. what would it include? Who would you invite? Right, he was, I'd have to get Liam Gallagher because he'd sort out um, the other, the music of mm -hmm. Dean. <laughs> and then, um, oh, I'd have to invite Tom Ford for Helen, to, for the Gucci. The close guy, yeah. Yeah, and um, oh, I might get Richard Ward as well, to, you know, hairdresser. And then, um, well, I'd have it on a boat, I think. Um, so they still couldn't get off. You know, no, they're still stuck. And just maybe sail into an enormous ocean, or yeah, be down a no river? cameras or anything. Yeah, I just have it in the middle of the Mediterranean or somewhere. Lovely. Okay, well, if, you're, you go. if you're going to go in there, yeah, for, say next year, celebrity Big Brother, just very briefly. Yeah. Would you do it? No, absolutely not. If you had to do it, like you know, gun to your head, what luxury items would you take in? Okay, I take. Oh, it's awful, but I think I've probably taken some tweezers. <laughs> That's all right. Tweezers work for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> After the break, we'll be chatting to Big Brother's little brother, uh, resident psychiatrist and vamp, Sandra Scott, about how the current housemates to be uh, coping with life outside Big Brother. But first, here's a tape to help Bean, uh, Dean even, beat over 50,000 other uh, hopefuls to get a place in Big Brother 2. See you in a minute. First thing about being a bloke is football, I think, and not having periods. <laughs> Hello everybody, I've got my legs crossed, as has our guest, which means we mean business. Uh, welcome back <laughs> to Big Brother's Little Brother, day 61. With only a couple of days left, our housemates' minds have turned uh, to their homes. £70,000 also, because you can't make the scene if you ain't got the green. Uh, Big Brother's <laughs> Little Brother resident uh, psychiatrist, Sandra Scott, delighted to uh, be with us here. Hello, Glad how to be are back. you? And you're going to talk us uh, through about the last week and indeed uh, the lives outside. That's right. Why do you think these four managed to beat off the rest of the competition? Well, I think that in the, Brian, Dean, and Elizabeth, they had to fight a competition and they did so because they had definite roles to fill, father, mother, entertainer, and they did it better. I think what's interesting about Helen is her main competition came from herself, and it was the, her weaknesses that landed up her being nominated mm. for not being great at tasks, and it was her strengths that got her back in and made her popular with the public. What were her strengths in that respect? I think well, ultimately she's irrepressible, she's very honest, and uh, I think she's always seen as just kind of always just being herself. And I guess as well, if there's a mother and a father, there's also a child. A child, indeed. Cool. And you have to look after a child. <laughs> this psychiatrist stuff's a doddle, mate. OK, now, they all spoke uh, about Thank last you. night about who the nominated. Uh, do you think that was cathartic for them? Well, to be absolutely honest, not really. When something's cathartic, it's really on your mind, it burdens you, and you let it out, and it's a relief. I think there's much more sense of them just being relaxed enough to be honest. Mm. It didn't matter anymore. Nobody could nominate them. And also, I think there's a real touch of a PR job. They know the public's been seeing them for quite a few weeks. It's been fairly two-faced in quite a few situations. And now it's kind of like, I'm being really honest. So, in light of what Elizabeth said, <laughs> <laughs> about you know, about Paul and Helen. I mean, surely she, there's not, she wasn't trying to play that situation at all, was she? That's just a mistake that she made. Um, I really do think that people are trying to put their best foot forward, and, and good for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there were certain strategies or certain things maybe people felt they needed to do to remain in the house. And now, and that was always about getting on with your housemates. Now it's a whole different ballpark. Now it's about getting the public to like you and try to be seen for yourself. You know, they talked about before we were in the house and now we're more individuals. Sure. And I think that's what the change is more about. So the guys don't know yet, but how do you think the, the evictee on Thursday will, will cope with the eviction? I think that... That first, surely must be... Yeah. Almost like losing in the semi final. Yeah, let's face it, you know, there's hard. four of you in there, one of you goes. The only logical conclusion is I'm the least popular. There's not much getting away from that. Mm. What I hope they see is that, gosh, we're all winners because we're here. And what's as interesting is I think it probably might be easier for Helen because all the others have never been up before, and as far as they know, they may all, always be the least yeah. popular. 
which might, that makes it that much harder. OK, cool. Now, um, in light of, of the fact that, you know, obviously Big Brother gives you instant fame, mm. and, and this year people are probably more aware of that than they obviously were last mm. year, how do you think the guys will deal with that? Well, I think that, interestingly, the fact that they've been out of touch with reality for so long might actually make, help them. Because in a way, instant fame is a very unreal situation. Mm. So going from one unreal situation to another unreal situation, yeah. which might just make it easier. Um, I think once the initial excitement has worn off, that things will settle down, and then it's kind of going to be about them making it really what they want of it. Yeah, and, and what if what happened in most cases last year, mm. where the fame suddenly stops, I mean, how mm. do they deal with that? I how can I deal with that in maybe six months? Well, <laughs> it's, it's a whole six months. <laughs> I think that... Um, <laughs> what, well, I've got to well, give Channel 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my card. No, no, th I think the important thing is, is that hopefully they will learn from the lessons of the people before. I think that sometimes they were excessive, and rather than taking all the positive stuff that came with it and remembering why they went in the house, I think they tend to forget that. So hopefully now they've seen that track record, they can learn and avoid making the same mistakes. Sandra, I've had my grilling. I've been well done. <laughs> You've been rare, as always. Thank you very much. OK, now then, uh, while some of you may think uh, that Paul spent all this time in the Big Brother house living the life of an international pop star, he's actually got a proper job too. Paul does uh, car doors and his artistic flair certainly helped him uh, in this respect. Uh, in fact, we've got proof that even at an early age, pool design skills were honed to perfection. I've been waiting eight weeks for this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you circa 1990 the ultimate <laughs> pool <laughs> machine. Hey, look at that. Paul, I have been waiting for this so long, man. It's, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. You did this in 1990, the ultimate war machine 2080 from Paul Clark. Now then, several things we have to go through here. Firstly, what in heaven's name are pumping shields? Clarky? Clarky, what are pumping like... shields? <laughs> So they like, just go like that. I don't know. <laughs> Can I make some noise? An elevator, which looks like a man's penis. <laughs> the elevator transports the driver to the head of the ultimate war machine. Bear in mind it's there, so it's got quite a way to go. And by far my favourite part about the whole thing is uh, you've got an enormous big grabber here, yeah? After the rockets have been fired, the arms <laughs> act as a grabber to pick up soil. Now, bear in mind that the Ultimate War Machine's cost is a thousand million pounds to make it, not including the missiles and the rockets. Ergo, you have designed the most expensive digger of all time. How about that? Okay, that is the funniest moment of my life. <laughs> OK, what I also have to draw the jury's attention to, ladies and gentlemen, is the size of the ultimate war machine. 150 foot is the ultimate war machine, but just in case that's confusing us down here, to scale, we have a six foot man uh, right down there. Probably can't... There we go, look at it, OK? Lovely. Body armour. Uh, I love the fact you've even included the make of the iron. Body armour. The body armour is made from a six inches thickness of tungsten, which when missiles are fired, uh, there's no damage whatsoever. What was in your head when you did this? Didn't you have a girlfriend in 1990? <laughs> and my favourite thing is, it looks like a harlequin. If you actually walked into battle, you'd just look at it and die with laughter. That is the fact. Something else is... That's not even mine. What? That's not even my one. That's Shut up, Paul Clark! <laughs> Mate, I'm mean, oh, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I did do it, and I'm thoroughly embarrassed. And that is more embarrassing than the international pop star thing. What was, what was, what was your whole your whole take behind this? I mean, we, did you have quite a psychotic childhood, or how did that work? Surely yeah. the ultimate peace machine might have been a better idea. You're speechless, aren't you? One of my favourite things. I'm completely before, speechless. Before that we move on. That is uh, unbelievable. Paul, in his uh, almost Mussolini-like way, has put missiles. One of these missiles can wipe out a whole army of soldiers, including tanks and jeeps. Oh, yes. <laughs> Got to watch out for those jeeps in times of warfare. Tara, ta ta what, what do you think? I think it's I amazing, actually. Well, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. When Lovely. did you do that? Have you seen anything funnier than that? 1990, really? that so 11 years ago. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I think it deserves oh. a round of applause. Paul Clark tells me what favourite piece of TV for years. <laughs> OK, um, today's talking point. Where do we go from here? Is uh, choose a tune for the housemates. The housemates eviction tunes. Uh, we should have Julie from Elgin on the line. Hello, Julie. Hello there. How are you? I'm just great, thank you. And what do you make of the ultimate war machine? <laughs> well, um, I had my TV turned down, but looking at the picture, I'm um, just a bit... Uh... Well, uh, Concerned? You, know, you don't really need sound with the ultimate war machine. It fills you with fear just looking at it, I imagine. OK, our talking point today is choose a tune for the housemates. What would be your tune for who? 
Well, for Dean, I chose the Guitar Man by Dwayne Eddy. Lovely. Um, he's apparently he was the most successful rock and roll instrumentalist <laughs> ever. <laughs> oh, good, you're an anorak also. I like um, <laughs> one of his albums was called Have Twangy Guitar Will Travel, so hopefully Dean will go Lovely. far. Um, he certainly, I, I give him a thumbs up anyway. Um, You're going to vote for him, are you? No, I haven't. I've actually voted for Brian. I want Brian to win, but what, what? I'm a singer myself and a, a qualified singing teacher, and Brian must be the worst Lovely. singer ever. Well, you leave your details with us and we'll pass that on. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Julie. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> John from Enfield. Hello, John. Good evening, Dermot. How are you? Not so bad. Enjoying the show. Thank you. Ultimate War Machine. Ultimate War Machine. Well, <laughs> I hope he designs the cars a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> That's sacrilege. That uh, your, your tune for the housemates and who? Well, the, 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 the two that my wife and I have come up with for <sighs> Helen. Team effort, like your style. Definitely <laughs> stopping the name of love after the uh, <laughs> performance of that young man sitting next to you. <laughs> and Lovely. it's got to be for Brian, Dancing Queen. Brilliant performance. The man's a star yesterday. So who, who are you voting for? You vote for him? My wife's actually voting for Brian and I'm voting for Helen. Go on! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that's Brian or Helen. <laughs> Helen. OK, uh, thank you very much. Next up we've got Jan from West Yorkshire. Excuse me, Jan. Who do you vote? <coughs> <coughs> Hello, Jan. How are you? <laughs> You right, Jan? Hello. How are you? All right? Yeah, thank you. Excellent. I wish you could say the same. <laughs> um, who, who would you... Uh, what would your song be? That's it, yes. <laughs> Mine <was just> a... <laughs> and it's Bugging by True Steppers. Who for, sorry? It's for Elizabeth. Now, why is that, you little devil? Bugging, because she's been bugging me from the start. <laughs> mm. she, in a very Dane Bowers way, has she not been returning your calls? <laughs> Don't worry, I was... <laughs> I'm so glad we've done this talking point today. Though. I can't hear you very clearly. Never mind, Jan. Thanks a lot for your call. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Carol from the Isle of Wight. No, Isle of Man. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Quite territorial, you, aren't you? Up there with your Manx cats and all. OK, uh, what's your song be? <laughs> and for who? I think that the theme for Brian should be Comina Piranus, the theme from the Omen, because he is the demon boy. Ooh! Oh. Swim against the tide over there in the Isle of Man, you independence. Um, why? He's just obsessed with demons, isn't he, so... Lovely. OK, Carol, thanks a lot. I'm very glad that the uh, phone lines are going so well today. I do apologise for that. We can go on to some emails here. Uh, Dean, Grandad Clive Dunn. <laughs> Failing that rock and roll star by Oasis. That's from uh, Andrew Hillman. Uh, hey there, Dermot and Paul. Very nice. I think that uh, Paul's, uh, Helen's eviction tune should be Deeply Dippy by Right Said Fred. Love Sadie 12 from Newcastle. That's cool. A couple of them for us, guys. Cool. And read them out loud if you could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speechless, sorry. Um, how about sending the clowns for Brian? Uh, Dancing Queen for Helen. While my guitar gently weeps for Dean. Today, that think? one. <laughs> I put a spell on you for Elizabeth. Lovely. Tyler, thank you very much. Paul, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Sandra, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, a sneaking suspicion g uh, gives me that we should probably, probably, probably should have finished the show on that. Uh, tomorrow we're joined by A League of Gentlemen and some other stuff. I sincerely hope you join us. Go on, it'll be fun. Bye. Thursday's the night on E4. Between the Channel 4 eviction shows, E4 is going live to the house at 8.30, so make it a date. Norm's moving on to bigger and better things next, so don't go far.